um, our next speaker, sorry, I have to. I couldn't ask him many questions because we we kind of have to run along. Is um, Paulina? She's the plant-based chef and founder of Raw Inside Out. Now this is very interesting. She's going to give us a talk about mindful eating. So I'm going to hand it over to Paulina. Thank you. So, hello everyone. And I'm going to come over to this side of the room. I've been told to walk past this quickly whenever there's one of these speakers. And that's the reason why. I just want to acknowledge this side of the room because I feel like you are all the way here and the screen is here. So, hello this side of the room. And I'm sorry, I have to go back because of the screeching. Um, so there are some raisin packets which are being passed around. Some of you will get a raisin packet. And um, if I could ask you to take out one or if two or three come up, but aim for one and pass it to the person next to you. And very importantly, do not eat it. Just hold it in your hand. We're going to come at a point to uh, uh, an exercise with the raisin. So you just have to be patient and hold the raisin in your hand. So, hello, um, I'm Paulina Salmenhara is my surname, the long name, Paulina Salmenhara, and I'm the founder of Raw Inside Out. So, we offer lifestyle and wellness uh, programs for happiness and health upgrades. This is our core program, it's called Six Sense Living, and I bring together my experience and knowledge in my three passion areas, which are as a raw food vegan chef, as a holistic healer, and as a conscious community builder. So I bring these uh, three skills together in this program, and it's focusing on a lifestyle which looks at four main areas of living. Savor is for food and drink. Sweat is for exercise. Shine is for body care. And sense is for mindfulness. So we've been hearing about edible gardens, urban farming, and I am all for that. What do you do, however, and by the way, you may expect that because I'm a chef that I'm going to hand out some recipes or I'm going to tell you about what's the most nutritious food you're eating, you, I recommend to eat. I also do do that, but today I would like to talk about what do you do with the food that you now have uh, in terms of eating it mindfully. And this goes for anything you eat. So when you go home today, it's not like that garden is going to be there for you already. Uh, so with any kind of eating that you, you engage in, I encourage it to be mindful. Before I go into what is mindful eating, do any of these scenarios uh, seem familiar to you? It's the morning, you're already in a hurry, and you're eating your breakfast, you're on your phone, and basically you're in the office already because you're going through your work emails. And at the same time, you're, you're chewing on whatever food you're chewing and you're drinking, and, and that, that's happening all the time. Uh, if someone were to ask you, what flavor did you most appreciate today? Or what sensation did you have in your, your mouth? Would you be able to say? Because it's so mindless for most of the time that we are eating. And I'm not saying this to criticize anyone here. I mean, one of the reasons that I'm talking about this is because I have been so guilty of that and still sometimes do. Uh, what about this scenario? Um, uh, you come home from work and your immediate response is to go for a can of beer or to go for some snacks and at the same time, once again on, the, on your phone and you're scrolling through, well, what happened today? What happened while I'm at work? Although realistically, <laughs> you only missed out on what happened during your 10 minute walk from the MRT back home, if even that, because this is very typical. Uh, so, so in that instant also, what, what aspect of, of eating are you satisfying? What's the point of eating? Or when you're, when you're watching TV, uh, it's, does the TV, the remote control even work without a packet of, of chip, chips? So I'm taking it to the extreme in that example, but, but I think there are situations that we relate to. Or Chinese New Year dinner, 
family and friends, lots of food, and you're eating and eating and eating, and then you start to recognize, I am full, but there's so much food, and they don't waste the food, and everyone else is eating, and it's so good, and it's only once a year, and you eat. Except that does tend to happen over many of our, our social meals. So, imagine instead that you engage in a mindful type of eating, where you engage the five senses, which are, I'm just checking to see if you're all awake here, what are the five senses? Someone from this side of the room, please. Sorry? Savor, yeah, so that's the taste. Someone from this, smell, sight, sight. Touch. touch, and, and even, even, yes, um, uh, hearing, because we hear like a crunch, for example, when we eat. Uh, and the sixth one I refer to as mindfulness. So that's why I call it a sixth sense dining experience. Let's try this out. So does everyone have a raisin by now? Or is there anyone who doesn't have a raisin? Hand up, please. Okay, this is great. Um, either everyone has a raisin or someone's tried to tell me, but, for, but now, the raisin. I need to cheat here and uh, guide you through a small meditation. So this is called a raisin meditation. So get comfortable and examine the raisin in your hand as if you had never seen it before. Imagine it as its plump self, as a grape, growing on the vine surrounded by nature. As you look at the raisin, become conscious of what you see. The shape, the texture, the color, the size. Bring the raisin to your nose and smell it. Are you anticipating eating the raisin? Is it difficult to not just pop it in your mouth? Now, place the raisin in your mouth. Bite ever so lightly into the raisin. Feel its squishiness. Become aware of what your tongue is doing. Chew and then stop. What's the flavor of the raisin? What is the texture? As you complete chewing, swallow the raisin. Sit quietly and become aware of what you're sensing. So this was just one raisin, but imagine a whole meal like this. I once took a meditation retreat with some nuns and monks from, from Plum Village, um, from Thich Nhat Han, um, Han's village, and we ate all our meals in silence and we had to chew minimum 30 times. And we really contemplated on where did the food come from? the long journey it took to get to our plate. And we enjoyed the, the, the color and the texture as you're doing with the one raisin. And actually, when you start to eat more mindfully, you eat less because when we're eating mindlessly, we, do, we have stopped communicating with our bodies and we've, we've unlearned to listen to the the cues that our body are giving us all the time. So there are many types of hunger. And, um, and some of them are like TV hunger. There's a drunk hunger. There's hangover hunger. There's um, a PMS hunger, pregnant hunger. Um, so many different types of hunger. Um, and it's good to become aware of what type of hunger am I now experiencing? Uh, I'm going to focus on seven types of hunger today. So the first one here, this is eye hunger. So this is basically, you see food, you want to eat. I remember as a child, my, my dad fooled me for many years by saying he's on a seafood diet. And I kept on asking him, but how come you're eating meat then? And then I realized that he is not C as in S-E-A, it's S-E-E. -E. Like he's your typical guy when you take him Sorry, Dad, this is going on video, isn't it? Well, basically, he sees food and he eats it. <laughs> so, then we have nose hunger. Smell, interestingly, is actually more powerful as a sense than uh, a taste. 
Uh, do you know cinnabons? Those, those buns that uh, s smell very strongly of cinnamon? So you might be walking around in the mall, minding your own business, completely happy, and then you get that first like whiff of cinnamon buns. And you weren't thinking about it, but now you are. And now all of a sudden, all you want is a Cinnabon. And you go around until you, you find the, the shop selling it and you, you have one. There you were completely led by your sense of smell, that very powerful sense. This is mouth hunger. So our mouth is constantly looking for stimulus. It craves interesting texture and flavor. And the two things we desire the most are creaminess and crunchiness. So sometimes we may feel that I just really need to eat something crunchy. I don't care what it is, but I need to eat something crunchy. So that is an example of mouth hunger. This here is one of the real types of hunger. This is stomach hunger. That's when you actually feel like you have some cramping and, and uh, you just know that, that you are really hungry. It's real hunger. Um, however, it is possible to uh, mistake anxiety. Let's say that you're about to give a presentation and you're getting a bit nervous and you start getting that feeling in your stomach. You may think that, oh, okay, I'm hungry now. I better eat. So this is, again, one of those things to consider. Is it really stomach hunger? This one is cellular hunger. This is the second real type of hunger in addition to stomach hunger. And this is... Um, a skill that we are all born with. We are all born with the ability to communicate with our body and to understand what is it that we need. So I love to do something called intuitive grocery shopping. I go, I go to the uh, uh, store and I, I look at like what vegetables and fruit and, and nuts and plants are calling out to me. Um, and I, I go for those. So this is something that we've kind of um, numbed out because we have so many stimulus coming at us all the time. But if you set the intention, you can start to have this conversation with your body again. This one is mind hunger. This is, this is where all the shoulds and shouldn'ts come in. So you say, I should be drinking. Um, green juice because I hear that it's very healthy and I should be having moringa powder in the in the morning because I just know that that's a superfood and then I'm going to be superwoman and I shouldn't have that lava chocolate cake because yeah you know it's got all that sugar and all that unhealthy fat and and then how do you even make a decision most of the time because one day coconut oil is at all cost avoided and then the next day it's a superfood and you should you should not only be cooking with it but you should be drinking it like in your coffee by the way it's very good in coffee i use it as a creamer and that thing they 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 uh that's now trending with some um espresso mixed with coconut oil it's really good um, um well that's the chef in me coming out now now i'm craving coffee um so this is mind hunger, and, and this is uh, also a tricky one because, again, of all the conflicting information from our parents. I mean, my poor children who are seated there, like, they've been living with me for like 11 and 13 years, out of which seven of those I've been really into food, and I'm like, right, this week it's agave nectar, it's a good sweetener. And then, just as they're in the habit of putting agave into their green, green smoothies, uh, out I come and say, mm. No, sorry, it's actually really high sugar. It's as bad as high fructose corn sugar. Let's not use agave anymore. So it's very confusing. So this is where you also just have that conversation with your body, because your body does know. And this one, this is heart hunger. This is that emotional hunger. I mean, obviously, she's um, heartbroken. But mm, for most of us, heart hunger is emptiness. It's when we feel empty inside and we try to fill it with food. So instead of going straight for the food, 
what about trying something else to satisfy your heart? Like maybe you have a pet, you could choose to go and spend some time with the pet. Or maybe you can call someone, a friend or a relative. Or maybe go out and nurture those plants growing in any one of these units that um, you've, you've been exposed to today. Uh, but, and if you do decide, by the way, to satisfy mind hunger or satisfy emotional hunger, that's okay. The thing to do then, I recommend, is to really enjoy it. And so uh, I've been uh, guilty of, of this, that I'm so good all day, and then it's 11 p.m., and I've been thinking about ice cream since 9 a.m., and then I go at 11 a.m. to the freezer, and I take out the ice cream tub, and I don't even bother putting on a plate. Like, I just eat it straight from there. It's cold, there's no taste, purely satisfying that emptiness. Whereas, what I do now is, I still eat from the tub <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> but what I try to do is put it in a bowl and really put a decent-sized portion not like you're limiting yourself, but a decent portion. Put on the toppings you want to, to put on it. For me, it's chocolate sauce, and I want some crunchies on it. And then really enjoy it. Like, and give yourself permission. Like, em embrace that moment and, and put that inner critique and the judge aside. So, you can start enjoying Sixth Sense dining, which is a part of Sixth Sense living. Uh, right away. And I have a uh, ask of you, which is for your next meal today to first tune in and see what type of hunger am I feeling now? And when you've identified that type of hunger, to then tune into your meal and really eat with awareness and mindfulness and enjoyment. So these are some of the um, social media sites that I'm um, present on, and I would love to connect on any of these, and I will be here after happy to talk to anyone who wants to talk about food. I've been eating all my life, so I know <laughs> a lot about food, and I bet there are many of you here as well who have been. So please do come, and we can start a conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, thank you to Paulina. So please contact her, and she's around. Please have. A, that's so good about thinking about food and, and being mindful about it. I have, I, I don't have any of those types of hunger. I have kwechap hunger. Very simple.